thank you for watching Hack the File. I'm Michael Lopez. And on today's episode, we're going to be looking at the next chapter in the Linux Basic for Hackers um, series. Enjoy. All right, we're back. Ah, feels good to be back. Um, I have been really busy. First off, I accepted a new part-time teaching position where I am an adjunct instructor for electrical systems and cyber cyber physical systems. So it's pretty exciting. It's pretty cool. I've been really busy um, just getting getting started and learning everything and learning where I'm supposed to go and, and stuff like that and meeting the teachers I'm helping teach and so um, looking at material uh, prepping my teaching class um, whatever classes I'm gonna teach so it's it's really fun but it's really busy also I'm getting my master's degree um, online um in the meantime too so i've been doing homework so but I'm, I'm gonna regularly do my videos i just oh also i uh updated my system so i got a new pc you know before i was running all this off of a laptop and um, it just it was whack and so i upgraded to a pc a tower and everything's running a lot smoother so um you know just been doing a lot of stuff and then got house projects and stuff but like i said i'm gonna be doing um at least two videos a week right and you know they're gonna be technical videos and then they're gonna be different videos so i'm gonna actually probably add a section for my school for my classes that i'm teaching and that's gonna be just different things like uh math you know um, conversions or something like that you know you, <clears throat> for people uh, um, following my channel it's it's all things cyber um, and when you go all things cyber you're getting into um, electrical math you're getting into um, you, you know um, hardware computers you know just everything so um, just be prepared there's gonna be a separate section for um, other things of that nature um, you know, and that's just for reference for my students or anybody that's, um, you know, wanting to learn um, about different things other than um, just cyber uh, per se. But yeah. All right. So let's, let's go on to the next chapter on this uh, Basics for Hackers series. Um, we're in uh, process management now. So let's just get it going. All right any at any given time linux a linux system typically has hundreds or sometimes even thousands of processes running simultane simultaneously a process is is simply a program that that's running and using resources right examples of a process includes a terminal web server anything running uh, commands okay uh, any data, any databases, any databases, the GUI interface, and much more. Any good Linux administrators, and particularly a hacker, needs to understand how to manage their processes to optimize their system. For example, once a hacker takes control of a target system, they might want to find a, find a, and stop a certain process like an antivirus application or firewall. To do so, the hacker uh, would first need to know how to find the process. The hacker might also want to get to set a scanning script to run periodically to find vulnerable systems. And, we'll, and so we'll also look at how to schedule such a script. In this chapter, in chapter you'll learn to manage those processes. First, you'll learn to view and process processes and how to discover which processes are using the most resources. Then you'll learn to manage processes by running them in the background, prioritizing them, and killing them if necessary. No blood involved. <laughs> Finally, you'll learn to... 
schedule processes to run on a specified days and dates and specific times. All right. Uh, viewing processes. In most cases, the first step in managing processes is to view what processes are running on your system. The primary tool for viewing processes and one of Linux administrator's best friends is the PS command. <coughs> Run it in your command line to see what processes are active. So PS, let's do that. And I just used this the other day. Um, well, I might use it right now. Actually, I am. I've got something running from a last um, <coughs> project. All right, hold on. All right, let's see. So, PS, let's see what's running. I'm seeing, I think this is the beef thing I was using in my last video. <coughs> All right, so we got two processes running. ZSH and PS, of course, but I don't know what ZSH is. All right, let's look at it. The Linux kernel, the inner core of the operating systems that controls nearly everything, <coughs> assigns a unique process ID, PID, to each process sequentially. As the processes are created, as the processes are created. When working with these processes in Linux, you often need to specify their PIDs. So it is far more important to note that the PID of the process than the name of the process. <coughs> Alone, the PS command doesn't really provide you with much information. Running the PS command without any option lists the process started, uh, said to be invoked by the currently logged in user. In our case, root and what processes are running on the terminal. Here, it simply says that the bash shell is open and running and that we ran the PS command. <coughs> we want and need far more information than that, particularly on those processes run by other users uh, and by the system in the background. Without this information, we know very little of what actually is taking place in our system. Running the PS command with the option aux will allow us all processes running on the system for all users as shown in list 6.1. Note that we don't prefix these options with a dash and that everything is in lowercase because Linux case <coughs> is case sensitive. <coughs> Using uppercase options would give you significantly different results. So PS aux run that one you gotta remember that so px ox is ox all in lowercase <coughs> root we got system we got a lot of stuff running here huh Here, where's the PIDs? Where's the PID right here? PID 1, 2, 3, 12, 1 through 12. Right? <coughs> As you can see, this command now lists so many processes that are likely run off the bottom of your screen. The first process is init. Listed in the final column, and the and the last process is the command we ran to display PS aux. Many of the details, PID, CPU percentage, time, command, and so on, <coughs> may be different on your system, but should have the same format. for For our purpose, here are the most important columns in the output. 
in this output. User, the user who invoked the process, the process ID, the percent of CPU this process is using, the percent of memory this process is using, the name of the command that started the process. In general, to perform any action on the process, we must specify its PID <clears throat> and see how to use this identifier to our advantage. Let's look at the all that stuff. So user, so root, PID1, CPU is not using anything. And the memory is using very little. And this is using new system systems. Deserialize the splash. Let's see who's using the most CPU. Mm, not with this guy right here. Run TV now switch. Oh, and this guy right here in the browser UI panel. And I think this is the beef thing. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to shut that down. I'm going to kill that process here in a second. So let's, uh, I'm going to take this PID and. <clears throat> Paste that on the note. I can't remember what is the notepad cherry. So what we'll do is we'll just keep moving. I think I'll come to that anyways when we kill the process. Uh, filtering by process name. When we inquire about or perform an action on processes, we usually don't want all the processes displayed on the screen. It's simply a problem of too much information. Most often, we want to find information on a single process. To do this, <coughs> we can use the filtering command grep. I introduced in chapter one. To demonstrate, we'll use the metasploitable. We'll use the metasploit exploitation framework that most widely that's most widely used ex exploitation framework and nearly every hacker's good friend. This comes installed on your Kali Linux, so start Metasploit with the following MSF console. MSF console. Let's do that. MSF console. Starts the Metasploit framework plugin. Boom, come on, come on. Oh, look, there's this uh, sacred cow or not the. Hey, my brain's not working today. <laughs> it is not wanting to kick start up. It hasn't started today. Um, <clears throat> All right. Let's see if my brain will start turning on here soon. Once the exploitation framework has been started, let's see whether we can find it in the list of processes. Basically, has now taken over this terminal. So open another terminal, and use the psox command, and then pipe it, which is the line, to, uh, to grep, looking for a string msf console. So PS Ox, pipe it, grip, MSF console. That's how you look for it, right? So let's go here. Let's uh, open up a new terminal set. And let's go uh, uh, PS Ox space. And we're gonna use the pipe function, man. 
And we're gonna say grip. Rip it. MSF consoles, what we're looking for. Right? Looks right. And there and there would be. That's the PID right there, I'm sure. Alright. That works. That's nice. Alright, let's go on the next one. Once the exploitation framework has been okay, wait, wait. From the filtered output in this listing, you should see all the processes that match the term MSF console. Here, you see the MSF console program itself from user bin MSF console. And then you should see the grep command you use to look for the MSF console. Let's see what that. I didn't see that. I didn't see that. I want to see that. Because that's pretty cool. Yeah, there it is. So it shows the command that we use, and I guess Ruby, Ruby, is uh, the command used to start it. <clears throat> I don't know, but we use grep command, right? No, wait a minute. Yeah, is that how that works? Or am I tripping? All right, let's let's see. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Yeah, to look for the console. Okay, uh, notice that the output did not include the column header list from PS. Since the keyword MSF console is not in the header, it is not displayed. Even so, the results are displayed in the same format. From this, you can learn some very important information. If, for example, you need to know how many resources Metasploit is using, you can consult the third column, CPU column to see that it is using 35.1% of your CPU and consult the fourth column to see that it's using 50% of your system's memory. It's quite a bit, a, a demanding beast. Oh, damn, well, I'm on a VM, so I don't know, let me see. First column, 8 point, 16 point percent. Wait, hold on, hold on. You can learn more and more. For example, you need to know how many resources. You can consult the third column, CPU column. So third column is, and then, the, and then the fourth column is the percentage memory. <clears throat> so, uh, uh, one, two, three, four. Yeah, CPU percentage so it's using it's a pretty beast it's not using quite as much as is uh because mine is vm so uh, i don't know what this guy well he's running vm too no oh no okay so this is uh yeah i don't know if he's running vm or not all right finding the greediest process with top when you enter a ps command the processes are displayed in the order they are started. And since the kernel assigns PIDs in the order, yeah, that's why I said one through whatever. <clears throat> um, in order in order they have started, uh, what you see is a process order by PID number. That's pretty interesting. In many cases, we want to know which processes are using the most resources. This is where the top command comes in handy because it displays the processes ordered by resources used. Starting with the largest. Unlike the PS command, which gives us a one-time snapshot of the processes, top refreshes the list dynamically. By uh, by default, every three seconds, you can watch this. You can watch it and monitor those resources resource hungry processes as shown in list 63 top it's just top top all right let's do top top so apparently the top one is what Oop. Here's a PID right here. 710. Zorg. 
XORG Q terminal system. Huh. That's pretty cool. Tap. System administrators often keep top running in a terminal to monitor the use processes resources. As a hacker, you might want to do the same, especially if you have multiple tasks running on your system. While you have a while you have top running, press H or a uh, question mark key will bring up a list of interactive commands and pressing Q will quit top. You'll, you'll use top again soon to manage your processes and changing process priority with nice page 65 and killing process on page 67 so press h or that while bring up with me all right let's try that where am i well because i'm in top h help oh, let's just press q Q, see? Just quit. Man, that's pretty cool. Top. All right. Managing processes. Hackers often need to multi process. And an operating system like Kali is ideal for this. A hacker may have a port scan, a port scanner running while running a vulnerability scanner. And exploit simultaneously. <laughs> this requires that the hackers manage their processes efficiently to best use system resources and complete the task. In this section, I'll show you how to manage multiple processes. Changing process priority with nice. You don't often hear the word nice used in context of hackers, but here you will. The nice command is used to influence the priority of a process to the kernel. As you saw when we ran the PS command, numerous processes run on the system at once, and all of them are contending for the available resources. The kernel will have the final say over the priority of the processes. Uh, halt and catch fire. No, but you can use nice to suggest that a process should be elevated in priority. Hold up. But you can use nice to suggest that a process should be elevated in priority. Oh, nice. Oh, and I wonder it's called nice. The idea behind the use of term nice is that when you use it, you're determining how nice you'll be to the other users. If your process is using most of the system resources, you aren't being very nice. The value for nice range from negative 20 to plus 19, <laughs> with zero being the default value. As high, a high nice value translate to a, to a low priority, and a low nice value translates to a high priority. When well, you're not being nice, so to other users and processes. When a process is started, it inherits the nice value of its parent's process. The owner of the process can lower the priority of the process, but cannot increase the priority. Of course, the super, the super user or root user can arbitrarily set the nice value to whatever he pleases. Negative 20 most likely to receive priority. Default nice value. Plus 19, least likely to receive priority. When you start a process, you can set the priority level with the nice command and then alter the priority after the process has started running with the re-nice command. The syntax for those two commands is slightly different and can be confusing. The nice command requires that you increment the nice value, whereas the re-nice command wants an absolute value for niceness. Let's look at an example to demonstrate this. Setting the priority when starting a process. For demonstration purposes, let's assume we have a process named slow process that's located at bin slow process. 
We want it to speed up its completion and would like to start the process with the would like to start the process with the nice command. Nice dash n negative ten, so it's like halfway been slow process, and then we're we're seeing where it's at. This command would increment the nice value by ten, increasing its priority and allocating more resources. On the other hand, if we want to we want to be nice to our fellow users and processes and give slow, slow give slow process a lower priority, would increase its increment uh, its nice value positively by ten. So nice negative n ten, yeah, being slow process. Give this a try on the process you have currently been running, and then run ps to see its changes, if all. All right. Let's see. Negative n is what we negative n is what we need to remember. All right. Let's see this real quick. So I'm just gonna take this x o r g. And I'm going to, uh, since it's the top one, I'm going to minus it, right? Is that what it said to do? Let me see. Uh, so it says, for demonstration, okay. So negative 10. <laughs> Increasing the priority. So we want to do 10. So we want to do this one. So nice minus n 10. Been slow process, but so let's uh let do this over here so I can see this. Alright, I got my processes running X O R G. And I'm going to do a new one. We're going to do uh, nice and 10. That slash. Capital X. Do some uh, command line kung fu. Oh man. Oh, okay, so apparently we can't mess with that function. But let's go to uh, top is one of them. Bbox client. Yeah, if I mess with any of these, I think I don't have any processes running that I can mess with. These ones aren't even. Might have to skip this uh, one because I don't think I have a good example. I can't. I probably can't cancel these ones. These ones are just like the main uh, things to run the DM and stuff. I think. I don't know. So I'm gonna skip that one. I'm gonna skip that one. All it's gonna do is put in priority. We tried and they said we couldn't do it because. So I mean that's good. Good enough. Um, if you wanna. You know, you find the process, you can make it top priority or not. Just remember 10 is um, lower priority, right? So it says give it a try and see if it, uh, if you have currently running and then run PS to see if it changes at all. Changing the priority of a running process with Renice. 
three dice command takes absolute values between negative 20 and 19 and sets the priority to that particular level. Rather than increasing or decreasing the level at which it started, in addition, Renice requires the PID of the process you're targeting rather than the name. So if slow process is running in ordinate amount of resources on your system and you want to give it a lower priority, thus allowing other processes higher priority and re more resources, you could Renice the slow process, which has a PID of 6996 and give it much higher value, uh, like so. Renice 19, so it said 19 and negative 20. 699, okay, so that's nice. We're gonna try this because I can't, you know, I don't, I don't have anything running, but I don't you know, have, well, this is theoretical right here, and then it says it wants us to find one. Well, I can go through all those different, um, Maybe, uh, let's try this. Let's get a PID of something. Here's the PID. Let's do this one. Let's pull it below. Let's do a cuter. Q terminal and that's uh so it's one of the top ones let's go here oh wait the Q terminal I downloaded the wrong one one of the PI Eight two eight zero two eight two eight zero two. Oh, I wanted what? P uh, uh, re nice nineteen. Yeah, re nice nineteen. Right. Re nice nineteen. See if I actually cut that. Yeah, that works. Old priority zero, new priority nineteen. So that does work. That's nice. That one looks works better, I think. I think this was the problem. Maybe that's not what I wanted to do. Now let's go look at the process and see if it. Cheap terminal. Yeah, it didn't really, didn't really change much. I don't have that many processes running. I guess that much uh, power. Huh? But it changed it. All right, let's look. Let's see what else we got. As with nice, only the root user can re-nice a process to a negative value to give it a higher priority. But any user can nice and reduce priority with re-nice. Oh, nice. You can also use the top utility to change the nice value with the top utility running. Simply press R key and then supply the PID and the nice value. Shows the top utility running when I press R key and supply PID and nice value. I get the following output. All right, let's see. It says press the R key with my PID with the top running. PID to re nice. Oh, some of them. Let's 
eight two eight zero two no. zero. Hold up. What did it say to do? Supply the PID and nice value. I'm gonna put it back to zero. Unacceptable integer. Unacceptable integer. It was at zero though, it said last time. Uh, one? No such process. 82802. 802. I'm going to put this at 20. Mission to that. Man, at least that tried to do something. When I press R key, I'm asked for the PID with the next with the text re nice PID value to value. Output should then change to reflect the new priorities. That I can put, I can put um, absolute values between negative 20 and 19. So, okay. Why well, wasn't that working? Uh, default PID. I don't want no default PID. 82802 is a Q terminal. Let's try another one. Uh, 1186. What is that? Yeah, applet 1186. Let's put that at 15. Top. User, load average, tasks, running, sleeping. work that time what am I looking at where is that top okay so it did work what is this one The output should have been changed to reflect the new priorities. So here was all the new priorities. Killing process. We're gonna, we're gonna just move on. That should it worked. Killing process. At times a process will come way too many system will consume way too many system resources. Exhibit unusual behavior or at worst freeze. A process that exhibits this. Is type of behavior is often referred to as a rogue process. For you, probably the most problematic symptom will be wasted resources used by the rogue process that can be better allocated to useful processes. When you identify a problematic process, you may want to stop it with the kill command. And uh, There are many different ways to kill a program and each has its own kill number. The kill command has 64 different kill signals. I could kill a man with 64 different kill signals. <laughs> and each does something slightly different. Here, we focus on a few you will likely find most useful. 
The syntax for the kill command is kill signal PID. Where the signal switch is optional. If you don't provide a signal flag, it defaults to sig turn. Table 6-1 lists the common kill signals. Signal name, SIA, number, number for option 1, description. This is known as the hang up HUP signal. It stops the designated process and restarts it, it with the same PID, SIA. I'm going to use kill signals. So I can put what? Kill dash up and then the one. Or kill signet. Signet. This is an interrupt signal. This is a weak kill signal that isn't guaranteed to work, but it works in most cases. Man. Uh, sig quit. This is known as the core dump. It terminates the process and saves the process information in memory and, the, and then it saves the information in the current working directory to a file named core. The core, the reasons for doing this are beyond the scope of this book. Sig term 15. This is the termination term signal. It is the kill command's default, default kill signal. Sig kill 9. This is the absolute kill signal. It forces the process to stop by sending the process's resources to a special device. Dev slash null. Using the top command, you can identify which processes you're using. Processes are using too many resources. Often those processes will be legitimate, but there will be malicious processes taking resources that you want to kill. If you want to restart a process with the HUP signal, enter in dash one option with the kill like so. Kelly kill dash one, and that's the dash one right there. So you don't have to put sign up, you just put the number of these numbers. Dash one, and then here's the PID. In this case of a rogue malicious process, we we'll want to send the K9, K-9 signal. Is this mad kill one, absolute kill? To absolutely kill the signal to the process. This might, this makes certain that the process is terminated. Kill dash nine. Okay, if you don't know a process's PID, you can use the kill all. Kill all command to kill all the processes. This command takes the name of the process instead of the PID as an argument. For example, you could terminate a hypothetical rogue process like this. Kill all dash nine rogue process. Finally, you can also terminate a process in the top command. Simply press the K key and then enter the PID. Let's try that one. Now these ones are cool. Uh, we're not going to practice these because, like I said, I don't have any processes running that, you know, maybe, ah, man, I'm telling you, I could probably run something that we created on another video that's malicious and then kill that, but I'm not going to do that. I mean, that's pretty self-explanatory. I'm sure it'll work if you want to kill a process, but we're going to do this one. Uh, we're going to press the K button and see if we can kill one of these without barking at me and telling me it can't do it. So I'm just going to press K on top and then I want to kill, let's try the terminal, right? And it's probably going to kill that next terminal. So 8202 again. Oh, what does that say? Send PID 82 signal 15 sig turn. What do I do? Say yes. A valid signal. What? Oh man. What? Okay, PID to signal slash kill default. Okay, so let's do uh what was that? Q terminal? 82802. Alright, 
Let's see what this says here. Killed its own terminal or killed all the terminals. Oh, that's pretty cool though. So apparently that was that terminal. It was a. Uh, it was its own terminal. Yeah. So it just came on right now. One second ago. Top terminal. What's this terminal? Let's see what that one is. So there's two terminals, right? There's 93193. 93, is there another terminal? These are the pros. Uh, what was the low? What was the low again? I can't remember. Bottom? Top PS PS Ox Top What was the one for the bottom processes? Hmm. I thought there was one. Anyways, it killed it. Killed itself. All right, running processes in the background. In Linux, whether you're working from the command line or the GUI, you're working with the shell. All commands that run are executed from within that shell, even if they run from the graphical user interface or the graphical interface. When you execute a command, the shell waits until the command is complete before offering another command prompt. At times, you may want to process you, you, know, you know, want a process to run in the background rather than having it to wait for the for it to complete in that terminal. For instance, say we want to work on a script in a text editor and had and so have called our next text editor Leafpad by entering the following Leafpad new script. In this case. The bash show will open the leafpad text editor to create new script. When we, when we work in the text editor, the terminal is occupied with running the text editor. If we return to the term, return to the terminal, we should see that it is running our text editor and that we have no new prompt to allow us to enter more commands. Huh. We could, of course, open another terminal to run more commands, but a better option to save resources and screen real estate is to start the text editor running in the background. Running a process in the background simply means that we will continue to run without needing the terminal. In this way, the terminal is freed up by other duties. Oh, man, that's nice. To start the text editor in the background, just append an amps, uh, amps sand ampersand and to the end of the command like so leave pad new script and let's do that let's do that let's do that I'm gonna close that I'm gonna close that one too I don't have leave pad man Come on now. Everybody's got a leaf pad. I spell it wrong? Leaf pad, new script.
Let's see if I can download a leaf pad. Leaf pad. New script. And oh man, that's nice. So I can use leaf pad and I can run some more commands. It opened up a new command. I bet you it's gonna have us kill that process. Now, when the text editor opens, the terminal returns a new command prompt so we can enter other commands in our system while also editing the new script. Yeah. This is an effective, this is effective for any process that may run for a significant length of time <clears throat> when you want to use a terminal. As a hacker, you'll find this useful for running multiple terminals with multiple tasks. To save resources on and screen space. You can also move a process to the background using the BG command followed by the PIG process. If you don't know, now you know. Now, if you don't know the PID, you can use the PS command to find it. So let's find, uh, we're going to move that to the foreground next, but let's find that PID of the um, of that so we're gonna do process leaf pad right and here's your PID so let's take that and then let's kill let's kill that kill let's do minus one I'm sorry Minus nine is an absolute kill. Oh, PID. And let's see. Kill, leaf pad, new strip. Now let's see. It's gone. Now let's open up a new leaf pad. It's in the background. And then let's bring it to the foreground. If you, if you want to move a process run in the background or the foreground, you can use the FG command. The FG command requires a PID process. You want to return to the foreground. So FG and the process. So now we'll bring that sucker back up to, to the foreground, and it'll probably open up that command. Wait, what was that process? Uh, leaf pad. I guess I could have did this. I wasn't thinking when I wanted it to do the process and stuff. We can check to see where, where it's at on the top process list next, but uh, let's bring it back to the foreground. Was it foreground? Oh, a little, oh, little FG process. If you don't know, little FG. So that's what I put. Leaf pad nine seven zero one eight nine seven zero one eight. Job not found.
don't know why it's did I not put this one in the background I did Let's see yeah leaf pad new strip and oh oh I killed that process no I started a new one nine seven zero one eight Put it in the background. That's weird. Wonder why that's not working. All right, let's see if we can um, see what top processes are. But eh, we'll just skip that one. I'm not going back. We're almost done with this chapter. All right, scheduling processes. Both Linux system administrators and hackers often need to schedule processes for any particular time of day. A system administrator might want to schedule a system backup to run every Saturday night, 2 a.m. For example, a hacker might want to set a script to run to perform reconnaissance on a regular basis. Find open ports vulnerabilities. In Linux, you can accomplish this in two ways, with at and prompt. The at command is used to set up the daemons and, and background processes, ATD which is useful for scheduling a job to run once at some point in the future. The Chrome Damien, Damien is more suited for scheduling tasks to occur every day, week, month. And we'll cover this detail in chapter 16. We use the at Damien to schedule the execution of a command or a set of commands in the future. The syntax is simply the at command followed by the time to execute the process. The time argument can be provided in various formats. Six, table 6.2 contains the most common at time formats. At 7.20 p.m. scheduled to run 7.20 p.m. of the current day. At 7.20 p.m. June 15th scheduled to run at 7.20 p.m. June 15th. At noon scheduled to run at noon of the current day. At noon on June 15th. At tomorrow. Scheduled to run tomorrow. Oh, nice. At now, plus 20 minutes. Scheduled to run 20 minutes from the current time. At now, plus 10, min 10 hours. Same thing. At now, plus 5 days. At now, plus 3 weeks. At 7.20 p.m. on this day in this year. When you enter the at daemon with the specific time at goes into interactive mode and you're greeting with the prompt uh prompt here is where you enter the command you want to execute at the specific time Kelly at 720 my scanning script can I just put at let's see let's who day is in there. let's try uh, when you want to stop entering commands hit control D so let's try that let's go to um, see if we can open up leaf pad alright I'm gonna clear this Let's see if we can open up. So, at. I ain't got no at. Did I not press? Did I not do that right? Let's go back to. At 7.20 p.m. In here. Did I not update this this uh, VM? I don't remember if it's new or not. Oh, I guess we we'll just wait.
at what time does it say? 19:55. Okay, good. Uh, at now what? I got one minute to figure this out. It says, uh, let me see if I can run, let me run leaf pad. for the run leaf bed in like one minute closed leaf bed not even nine yet I mean it's one one more minute better open it that'd be cool if it works I, I don't know how that works she yeah, had it just closed it. Missing something. Oh, so I gotta put root. Pad open.
Yeah, I'm just messing with this. I have no clue. Sit and run the command. Yeah, I'm gonna have to Google that and because uh, this is not too clear, is it? Or am I just tripping? This code snippet will schedule my scanning script to execute today at seven when you want to stop. Oh, okay, so this is running a script, but if it should have ran. Should have opened up LeafPad, no? Right, I'm gonna Google that real quick because now I'm just. You know what? And I like this guy. Cron, job scheduler, open terminal, you can do this by pressing control alt T, edit the cron file, type the following command, cron tab E, add new cron job, what are we doing, we're doing at, right, we don't want to use cron, we want to use at, So we're gonna say you uh, I love this copilot. Schedule a task using at command to open leaf pad, follow these steps. See, I love this. Install leaf pad. Already did. Install at. Already did. Enable the ATD service. Pseudo Enable now ATD servers. Schedule leaf pad. Echo leaf pad at now. At now. Oh, so, so this is just, this is different. All right, let's try that one. Oh, so, I'm gonna go here. I'll run this. Let's do that. We're going to say now plus one minute because I ain't got that time to wait. Now plus one minute. I'm going to wait a minute and see if that opens up. This is just a different way to do what they were saying to do, right? With at. I guess I could say at now plus one minute and then put echo leaf pad. We'll try that way next. Right? We have to figure all this out. Oh, let's see. So 2005 it'll open, if it does, 
or whatever starts running, I should have said thief pad and see no leaf pad running. Let's try another way. Plus one minute. one of these work. I don't think any of those gonna work. So you just play with this. This is fun if you just play with it. I've never done this before as you can tell. <laughs> uh, but if we can get all this to work that'd be awesome. But it's not. So that one, I guess, didn't work. That command. What's that see? 2025? I hope not. Let's try this one again. I, don't know. I feel like this should work. This one. Monday, twenty thirteen. Supposed to be minutes that took off the S on it. So 29, so one minute. I'm just messing with all this, and that's what you gotta do. You gotta Google stuff, mess with it. If the book shows you something it don't work, I mean, there's a thousand ways to skin a cat, is my favorite saying. Google it, see if we can get another one, see if some other way to do it works, you know? Um, well, that one makes sense, because you're using at. I mean, 
that one looks like it'll work good. It should pull up leaf pad or echo leaf pad. I don't know what. If it's just gonna pull up leaf pad. Yeah, that's not working. Anyways, we tried. Um, you guys got to mess with that, you know, have fun with it, keep Googling stuff. Maybe you have to use cron, maybe at's not working. Um, I don't know, but you, I mean, that's the beauty of it. You get in there and you mess with it. All right. Google stuff, mess with it. I ain't got time to do it, but you know, that one's not too hard. Managing processes in Linux is a, is key to everyday Linux user and hacker. You must be able to view, find, kill, prioritize, and schedule processes to manage your Linux instance optim optimally. Optimally, a hacker can often a hacker often will need to find processes on the target they want to kill, such as antivirus software, or firewall. You also need to manage multiple processes in an attack and prioritize them. So, what did we learn? You can use PS to find your processes, top to find your top processes. You can kill a switch by, you know, kill dash nine, and then the PID, you can kill all. You can re nice something. Uh, you can nice something. Negative 10, positive 10, you know, these are the terms, and then you just mess with it, right? You know, if you're a real hacker and you're into it, you'd have all this memorized and just be a complete badass. Um, for now, all we're going to do is just pr practice with it and play and go through and hopefully we do it five, ten times. I couldn't get this leaf pad to schedule to open, but even, you know, uh, but it doesn't mean that I, I can't be, well, I would, would never be able to. You know what I mean? You, you know, you figure things out and you mess with things. Uh, watch this come on tomorrow or something and be like, oh, look, it worked. Um, and, you know, these videos are to, you know, especially these basics for uh, hackers, you know, Linux for hackers, they're meant to just go through. We're going to go through and we're going to enter in the same commands over and over again anyways through the course of this video. So I had fun. I learned a lot. I mean, I've done this before, the process and all that, of course. But um, like I said, the more I do it, the more we do it together, the more we're, it's going to burn in our brain and we're going to remember these commands. And if we need them, like, oh, let's see what process is running. That's, that's PS, you know. Uh, where are we at? Uh, PWD, you know, and stuff like that. How do I get to the next one? CD, CD dot dot. We'll go backwards, you know. So it's um, these are things that you're constantly going to be entering in as commands, and the more you do it, the more we go through, the better. You know, there's a lot of stuff I know. I don't know nothing. Um, I'm I am learning with you guys on all this stuff and the base and the basics for uh, Linux, right? Basic Linux. I mean. Um, I think I have scheduled something before, but I don't remember. It's been a long time. I don't, I don't uh, dabble in this all the time. Only when I, you know, usually only when I'm doing this stuff. I'm not a Linux administrator or anything, right? Obviously. So, um, uh, but if I really wanted to get that to work, I'm going to do more research. I'm going to keep trying and trying and trying. That's the beauty of these VMs and stuff. If you got about an hour to spend, do it. Get it running. And you know, like on my channel, when we get something working, we're like, great, and you get excited and you're happy and you learn something, right? All right, that was Hack the File. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Have fun.